Well, the battery stopped. I got it plugged in. I just kind of popped another little piece of paper on top of this because it was already damp and pounced it like this. That's that's called pouncing. Uh, <laughs> and I pounced it on like this so that I'm not tearing it. And I put it over that tear there. And this will be a uh, when you overlay transparent color, it um, doesn't get exactly darker. It gets more intense, like watercolors. If you let it dry in between, put another one on top. It doesn't disappear because it's the same color, so you can see through it. It just becomes a more intense Well, and then the original will be able to see this more when it dries, but you can see where that's been put on. I think I should put a little There are three layers there, and as you see, it's still transparent. I think a lot of us, if we've had high school and junior high school art classes, have at some time or other taken made a tissue paper collage and experimented with. Overlaying different colors and overlaying the same color. All right, so there's that. I'm going to let, lay this flat. It's going to lie flat. I will lay it flat. And let it dry some more, and I'll put it back up on the bottle. And while I was fiddling around, I also found this piece of yellow green. I actually found it the other day. It did have plastic on it. And the plastic has come off. A lot of the ink has come off too. And that's fine. Okay, so. Yes. So hopefully I'm going to be able to put all these little clips together. It's easier to pause. Okay, so now this is glued on. This is the tissue paper. It dries faster. This uh, napkin, of course, the napkins are absorbent. They're supposed to be absorbent. So it's holding this um, wetness for a while here. And I'm going to wait till it's completely dry so that I can also flatten it and then glue the other side, which is what I'm doing on this one. You see? This one doesn't have anything on this side. Okay, so yellow. Back here with the glue. And I'm just going to very quickly trim this. And just a rough trim. I've got some more green. Now, we trim corners just like we do for sewing collars and things like that and doing very nice wrapping. Now this, I think I'm just going to go right ahead and 
show you how I do this. Well, I'm not going to be able to show you much. I don't know what I did with my sponge brush after all of that. It's kind of um, unbelievable and par for the course. Uh, the things I do. Okay, well, here's that other one. And I'm just going to use it for now. Well, I hope I find my brush before it gets dried out. It's supposed to be in the back. Obviously, I got overexcited. Okay, so with this, to bring these edges up, this is a really nice and easy thing to do. She put the glue there, and then you take it out. And then, You take it in. It's really easy. And it's so tidy. And there you have that. And wait for that to dry. And we have this piece of paper to use then when we do the inside of this one. The inside of this one. And that's all. Uh, I'm sure my brush is just some very weird place. Okay, so it appears to be dry-ish. It's always going to look a little wet. Actually, it still feels wet because it's darker. There are two layers there. Right. Makes it darker. I'm in artificial light now. Just an experiment. I'm going to cut this. In order to do what I just did on the green one when I flipped it, uh, yeah. I didn't ever find my brush. It's not on the floor. I do that a lot, run off with something in my hand and don't find it for quite some time. Anyway, here's the other little brush that I have for now. It's disappointing, that's a brand new brush. I thought I was going to get a bunch of stuff done. So here we're just going to do The little edge where we brush it out and then we brush it in. Right. Now that's done. So all that's left is then to take this piece and that piece and then we're going to do the back pretty much the same way we did the green one here and this is the first time I've done it with folding the same oops 
napkin over. So this is basically a junk journal where I'm collecting the colors of the rainbow in order. From red at the beginning through red-violet at the end. Oh, it's something I like to do. I love color, 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 color. Yep, that's done. And that's that. Okay, now this one is completely dry, so I can do the little trim that I do. These are nice sharp scissors. Mostly just the front is sharp, but yeah, I washed them. But uh, these are actually a cut like a sewing scissor so that you can run along right, like this on the bottom and keep straight. And you can also cut a lot so that you don't wobble as much. Cut a length. There. Okay. Now this one. I might want to put a little
just very careful not to tell me how to draw anything. Who wants to march on your sorry ass?
No. Because nothing has been done about food. doing standing here okay, this is dry and I still haven't found my brush these things are dry and this one is just a little bit of a yellowy green so I'm gonna put it here it's going to get more yellow because it's on there so that it can start blending into the yellow greens that are coming. Okay, let's see. So, it's an easy one here. This one's not good because this is hard here. So I tore that paper just with this hardness on it. So now I'm adding other yellows to this yellow page. And it's going to be something like a glue book, I guess, little by little, of things that are yellow on this page. And then yellow, green, and green, and blue, green, and blue, and so on. Hmm. Done. I apologize for the TV in the background. I just listened to one. Uh, recording I made, and it is oddly annoying back there. Even when I know what it is. I'm working on the yellow green page right now. I put some green down and I put yellow over it. Here. And it's not really yellow greenish enough yet. So I'm trying one here to put yellow down first. And then I'm going to put the green on top of that. I might be brave and do it while it's all wet. I gave up on finding my brush. I still haven't found my brush. And I'm hoping that there'll be a clue in one of these videos as to when the last time I had it was. Uh, so I've given up on that. And the gentlest thing I can think of, gentlest and easiest, because I don't want to have to wash the brush, is doing this. I'm going to put this.
We've just got um, KTLA Channel 5 back on Spectrum. And really, KTTV and KTLA are the two main reasons I subscribe to the television service from Spectrum. We can't get uh, ordinary channels here. Um, we have hills blocking the main signals. Never have been able to at the beach, uh, at this part here, because we're <clears throat> on the facing side of a sand dune, the west side of a sand dune, and the TV signals are back to the east. Anyway, KTLA invented the SIG alerts, I believe. Well, actually, I think I have... KNX or KFWB on the radio did, but then they picked those up. Um, KTLA had the first news helicopter in LA. And so for that, you know, whenever I see something big going on and I see helicopters around, I look up to see, is it KTLA? Usually yes. Flip on the TV and watch see what's going on so but KTLA and KTTV and KNX also are three local Los Angeles stations so back when <clears throat> people had only three stations CBS ABC and NBC here that'd be two four and seven we also had five nine eleven. And 13, KCOP. So that's one reason we're so pop culture is we have grown up with a whole bunch of TV stations you know, before cable. You know, back when we had to go up to the TV and turn the dial to change the station. Oh, and then there's UHF, and you go on to the UHF, and there's a whole range of stations in there. And that's where our Spanish language stations were, and... No, they still are the same ones, but they're included on the, the uh, broadcasting lineup. Um, Spanish language, Korean language, uh, uh, KCET, the PBS programs. Um, let's see, Channel 52 later on got into showing some reruns of TV. But all of this was before cable and before remotes. I don't know what I'd do without my remotes now. I like my Xbox remote. I don't even need to aim it. Okay, <laughs> that's enough. Um, this is supposed to be yellow green, and it's going to be a background. If it doesn't come out quite right, I can glue little found There's things. There's a nice on. advantage to having your stuff out to continuously work on. I have this little scrap here, and I went, well, I need to do something with that while I've got it out. This is still sitting out. The mixed school glue with water, two parts glue to one part water. I still haven't found my sponge brush. So this one, you're just kind of fiddling around at home, and uh, you've got your stuff out. Some of it might be drying, and then you run across something else. Look at here. Haven't found my sponge brush, but you don't really need a whole brush for this. This is not bad stuff. It's just glue and water plastic glue and water. You wouldn't want to eat it, but it probably is non-toxic. Yes, it's school glue, and it's non-toxic. I wouldn't recommend eating it, but if you had it on your fingers and accidentally stuck your finger in your mouth, it probably wouldn't hurt. It's not going to cause any allergies on your fingers. So there, I just did that, and I didn't use a brush. I didn't use a sponge brush. I just used this. I didn't make a big mess. Well, maybe I can stick a few more in. Just kind of hanging around today. Uh, it's a beautiful day. Oh, I put a 
picture on Instagram of a seagull that I had the opportunity to sit and talk with for an extended period of time at the pier. A young seagull that had black uh, legs and a more orange beak. And so beautiful. They're very nice. They're big. If you just sidle up to them without moving a lot, talk calmly, they'll they'll look and stick around and see if you're going to throw some food around. So I just threw away all these dried chips and things that I had to take down there for them because I didn't go down there with them. Yeah, but I did <laughs> have the wonderful opportunity to see some girls that had come down to the beach and you know, it's not sunbathing weather, but it's it's warm enough to go to the sun and, you know, wear your shorts and a jacket. And they put a towel down and their snacks and all, and I happened to notice it right before they did. Um, up at their towel, it looked like a bee colony, kind of. It was all seagulls all on their, their stuff because they had some food there. And those seagulls will take it right out of your hand. I had one take a... Part of a bur nice burrito from Brothers Burritos right out of my hand when I was watching the, a surf <laughs> contest down there. It came up right behind me and bashed into me. They're big. They're big. Big. <laughs> big birds. Didn't hurt me. It just bashed into me. It did the, I don't know, not the hugger mugger. I don't know what it's called, but that one where you run up somebody bump into them and run away with their wallet <laughs> it was a bird they're great i enjoy watching them and i thought oh you know i don't usually do this i'll, I'll bring a burrito down to the beach and eat it i had it in my hand up close to my face and it came right over my right shoulder and bam <laughs> okay i love seagulls they're really they're very nice birds Okay, um, and then when the girls went up to get their stuff, they were afraid of the birds, and they thought the birds were chasing them. <laughs> okay, it was a lovely day yesterday. But yeah, on Instagram, watercolors, I love, just capital P for <laughs> a la prima. Um, and I just put that one up. I haven't really figured out how to use Instagram yet, so trying to post pictures of uh, the beautiful sunsets and all that I've seen here recently. Anyway, here's this book, and here's I've done a little bit more. I located some of these stamps that I had picked up. Um, and this is a Y. I believe it's yarrow, and I thought, well, I'll put it on here for yellow. And I had this butterfly. It's really a fascinating butterfly. I was looking to see what it was. It's made of feathers, see? There's the spine of the feather. And then painted feathers. There's a spine of a feather there. So I put that on for my yellow sheet here. And I put the Y on for yellow. And I believe this is, you know, these are a floral thing with a letter and it it's a plant that starts with that letter, and I believe this is yarrow, which is the stalks of these are what are used in the I Ching for um, uh, casting the lines. Uh, more traditional in place of the coin, their, their coins are in place of that. And then this is this stays on ink, and I went, oh, that's right. You can stamp on glass or anything with this stuff. Let me try it. So I, I stamped on the cellophane here. And then, of course, I decided I needed to stamp there, so I turned it over. And then I decided that to make sure it stamped really well, I should put my hand on the back and press on it while that ink was wet. But it still kept quite a bit. You see there? There's the rest of it's on my fingers. And here it went on too light, so I doubled it. 
difficult to get it flat onto uh, this crumply napkin. Um, and that can be solved by putting something more spongy, not real spongy, but softer, like felt behind here when you press it. Sometimes, you know, a lot of times I just press my hand, but that that's <laughs> not always a good idea. Okay, so I got, this is the yellow one, and here's the yellow-green one. So here's how this envelope's fitting together. It looks pretty good for a little start. So now I've found a green feather. I think it came off of one of the Christmas cat toys, a, a mermouse with feathers. Uh, this one here, the yellow-green one. You've got some yellow-green in here, and also this olive color is actually a yellow-green as well. Just a darkened one. So I'm just going to stick this down right here. Let's see. I want the parrots as a pair right there. Maybe I'll tear off the two... Sniff, sniff. You know, just flap it on like that. The old finger painting method. I just don't like to do it a lot because it makes your fingers calloused and I have very sensitive fingertips. As it is, just swiping on the on the uh, phone is a bit much for my finger. Kind of tingles all the time. Whoops, of course, look where it came off. In one place, I really want to get it covered up because there's some writing there. That's where I goofed it up. Let's see if I can save it. Yep, there we go. I think that photographed. Oops! Just, okay, here's an important thing with the napkins. Learn to leave well enough alone. Come back later. Here, I'm just going to put a little extra to keep it from sticking to my finger. Now we'll flap this guy over here rather than cut it off. And another thing is, these papers are not all bug-proof, but with the glue on them, uh, they are. This is a plastic glue. Of course, if you use the vegetable-based glue, mm, they would not be bug-proof. And if you use a rabbit skin glue, oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now, I've used rabbit skin glue in gesso, it's, and you use it with oil paints and all, and that, of course, the bugs are not going to get into either. All right. Hey, that looks real pretty, doesn't it? I have to remember that it's my yellow-green page, so I'll be looking for other things to put in, but at the same time, I'm picking up scraps and going, oh, I don't need to throw this away. I'll just stick it on to here. Um, I think 
Well, it's getting a little bit better in here as far as the scraps go. I have some furniture to go as well. I have some rattan chairs. I'm gonna, I guess, put on local Facebook. All right, four and a half minutes. Just quick that. little flip through on where I've gotten to on this one, and hopefully I'll get these edited together into one. Um, because I finally got one more envelope. All of these envelopes are from uh, the same place, and they are a legal-sized envelope, but they seem to be wider than most of the ones that come with uh, bills. These come with bank statements, so maybe banking envelopes are different than bill envelopes. Not, And then the other ones that come to send in your stuff are smaller still. Anyway, here's the yellow orange. I glued that on and just holding these leaves here for now. There's the yellow. That's nice and permanent on there. The stays on ink. More yellow. Here's the yellow green one taking shape. And this is actually a, this is a napkin. Just took one little corner out of the one ply of the colored part, put it on there. So this makes a little journaling spot. Green. Uh, blue green hasn't come yet. And blue, which I actually already had started with tying out my uh, Copic markers. When I first found them, I'd been looking for them for years, and I found them, and they were nice and juicy. Okay, blue, and here's a whale. And this blue is really moving toward a blue-violet, which will be over here. And let's see, a violet piece somewhere. I must have dropped it. It's um, plasticized or leaded something. Oh, here it is. Here's a real nice purple. Just plain purple, a.k.a. violet. Speaking of which, I'm going to go into these in just a second. I'd say that is more definitely a red violet there. And this violet is... I guess a red violet also, but more towards violet than red. But this is definitely a good old violet to use. So that will be on this envelope. And then I have one more envelope to add to this.